Las Vegas. What are, what are maybe two of your, what are a couple of your favorite moments in Vegas? Like um, you come here? A couple of my favorite moments, my, of course, well, my first favorite moment was beating James Tony in 1994 at the MGM Grand because that was the time that I stepped up on the block to beat the big guy on the block. And when I came to beat the big guy on the block, he definitely was the big guy on the block. He was the man that was the man at the time. So it's like a lot of people think that I did stuff from nowhere to say nowadays when I'm talking about boxing, when I'm talking about pound for pound fighters, when I'm talking about different things. But it's like I don't dig. I only go from my knowledge and my experience. You feel me? So when James Turner, when I fought James Turner, James Turner was the man. Had I fought the same fault that I fought with Bernard Hopkins and I beat him every round, but I really didn't just, I mean, I beat him easy every round, but I didn't make it, I didn't take no risk because I didn't have to. I beat him so easy, it didn't make sense to take a gamble. And he was not the man, he was just the guy I was fighting for the middleweight title. So I safely, smartly took him apart with one hand. With James, another hand was a little bit different. When you approach pound for pound supremacy, you gotta dominate that other guy or you're not really pound for pound the best. It's still a question of who, like right now, we still don't really know who the best fighter out of Triple G and Canelo ever is. Why? Because nobody's dominating. Right? After the first fight with Warden Kovalev, we still arguing about who won the fight. Why? Because nobody dominated. Well, if don't nobody dominate, then you don't deserve to take the man's title. Because he is the man. For you to be in his spot, you gotta prove that you can dominate him. If you can't dominate him, then why should we give you his spot? Because we know what he can do. He already proved himself. So when I came in 94 to beat James Tony, I came to beat the man. And it was so bad for me that. When he fought Iran Barkley, they wrote him and said, you got 10 days, let us know whether you want to keep the middleweight title or the super middleweight title, right? When I signed to fight him, because I want to give the fans the fight they want to see, they want to see who can beat the man right now, I was stripped of my title right away. I didn't get no chance to say, okay, if I beat James, I got 10 days to tell them whether I want to stay tight. No, they stripped me of my title as soon as I signed to fight James. But that's how sure I was that I was going to beat James. That's how sure I was that I was the man at the time. I said, y'all take that. I ain't gonna need them to have those anyway. So y'all take that, and that's what happened. Right. But my second member was General Reese, that, because that was something that God gave me that I never dreamed of having. I never thought that I would even fight for a world heavyweight title, because I never was a heavyweight. I turned professional as a dream of the way. So I never thought in a million years I would ever be even thinking about fighting for a heavyweight title. Yes, sir. Right, I was say, it was kind of a surprise announcement for all of us. I mean, for you to be fighting again, and then not only do that, but to fight on UFC Fight Pass. Can you just talk about how this whole thing came together? <laughs> well, I can say this for any kids, anybody that watching, this is a true story, a true testament. When they say you, you reap what you sow, that's a very true statement because back in 94 when I was on the tour to fight James Tony, a kid came up to me and said, could he go down to the arcade and play games with me on the press tour? And I'm finna fight the baddest man I ever fought in my life. You know who that kid was? Dana White. So now, I'm at the end of my career, and he's thriving in his career. Look who came back to give me something I never thought I'd see. A fight, my last fight on UFC Fight Pass. No boxer has fought on UFC Fight Pass yet. So when they tell you, you reap what you sow, be careful what you sow, because you will reap that. And you should sow good seeds, therefore you reap good seeds. I never saw this coming, but that's a true statement of you reap what you sow. You know, I took him in, we hung out, we played games, we did our thing. I didn't even really remember him at the time. He came to me later on and said, you remember that kid you hung out with during that press tour? Because I don't do things to remember it. I do things because that's who I am. You understand me? So when I do a good deed, I don't write that down in my, my memory that I did that for you. I don't care. You know who knows I did that? You and God knows. That's all that matters to me. But he remembered. So he came back and look what he's doing for me right now. Pretty amazing I, to be here today and look at, like, I mean, you've seen yeah. MMA come up from nothing and now you're here in this, you know, multi-million oh, dollar facility. You never know what God has in store for him. I never knew at that time that that's and he actually was talking to my people back then about them trying to get involved. He just that I wasn't the talk guy they were and I couldn't really make the decision because they was doing it, it was their money, they was doing their thing, and I know that they hate now that they didn't do like I did and pull him in because look what he has grown us into. So you mentioned when you fought Ruiz. Yep. And now Andre Ward has put on some weight and he's talked about specifically mentioning you doing that as a something he wants to do as well. Do you think he could be successful at that? Well, you never can say what a person can be successful at doing because nobody ever thought, would have thought that I could have done it. So I'll tell you, if I did it, I think of course he should be able to do it because it's not easy. But I know who Andre is. And with the fight, with the tenacity, with the heart that he has, it's like when we go out to set these marks, we set them for these guys under us to try to follow the top 
or even set it even higher. So for him, he's a guy who has came up and watched me set a mark. He wants to go even higher because if he wins the heavyweight title, he's going to do probably what I didn't do, which is win the cruiserweight title too. You feel me? So he can take the mark a step even higher. So I don't see why he couldn't be able to do it. I mean, it's not going to be easy, but if anybody could do it, I think it would be him. Corey Anderson Silva used to throw out your name quite often. I wonder how, how interested were you in that at the time, and how close did that ever come to happen? <laughs> well, man, to be honest with you, I was so interested because I knew that just like the Conor McGregor Mayweather fight turned out to be one of the best events of all time, I knew that the Roy Jones Jr. Anderson Silva event would have been one of the best events of all time. So when you talk boxing, it's one thing. When you talk MMA fighting, it's another thing. But when you talk events, it's a whole other light. And so many people from that world, because they knew that he idolized and watched my boxing moves, he even used them sometimes when he fought. And he was a, one of the most superior guys that they've had in the UFC. So if he learned from this other superior guy that was in boxing, and he used to box himself anyway, then why would you put him in the ring together just to see what happens? Because it's still something that people want to see. You watch it right now, right? Absolutely. I definitely would watch it right now. If I wouldn't even Roy Jones, I still want to watch it. Because I want to see how good he is at pulling off Roy's tricks and could he use Roy's tricks against him. Yet, I also want to see what Roy come up with different and new because he's copying all Roy old stuff. You got to come up with something different because the stuff you normally do, he knows it. So it's not going to work on him. So it's more of an event than a boxing match. And the events always outweigh boxing matches. You understand what I mean? It's like back in the days, the Super Bowl is good, the NBA All Star game was good, I mean, NBA championship, the finals is good. If we have an epic game, we got a good game. But when we play the All Star game, <laughs> you got the best of the best. We all want to see how that happens, how they will merge on the court, how will this guy and this guy play together, how will that guy and that guy stop this guy. It's stuff we can't dream of. That makes it an event. That's what makes it so fun and so big. So now it's kind of taking the fun out of it because they don't go as hard as they used to back then. But back then, we got to see a dream once a year. We got to see sometimes Larry and Dr. J play together against some other people when we used to see them butt heads. You understand me? So that's what events do. And so an and event like that will probably still pull me out of retirement. Did that fight come close, or why did it happen? Daniel is the man with that. He had other plans usually for Anderson when I was trying to make it happen. So when you have a plan, when a guy draws out like, like this whole compound, this was something that he planned to do. When a guy has a plan, it's kind of hard to change the plan because he already got a plan drawn up. So most of the time when I ask him about the fight, he already had a plan or something that he's working on trying to do. And don't get it wrong, sometimes different things, different attributes play a factor in those plans and you don't get to do it the way you want to do it or where you want to do it. So sometimes the things that he had planned did not mature but it was never a time that when they did mature, we could go and make our fight happen because usually when he said he had plans, I went on and did something else. Is so that still I, a fight that interests you? Of course it is because, like I just said, it's not a fight, it's an event. Events always interest me. And because we were trying to do it before they did. So, of course, it's an event. It's a huge event that interests both of us. So you would come out of retirement for that fight? Of course I would. Why not? And I would get in top shape and be ready to win it because I'm not planning on losing nothing. The only thing I want to lose is weight. That's it. Has Dana brought that up? We really haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. Late as of late, we, we were trying to put this together first because he is trying to get into boxing and putting UFC fight pads at Roy Jones on UFC fight pads in a boxing match was a big step toward getting him into the boxing arena. So that's what we've been talking about first. But quite naturally, I'm sure that will come up because I know Anderson still wants it. And if he wants it, of course, I still want it because, like I said, it's not a boxing match per se. It's an event. What do you think of Dana White getting into boxing? I think it's a brilliant idea because he has a lot of things that he's learned from the UFC by doing things his own way. Brought the UFC to a spot where boxing never has gotten to yet. You understand me? So it's like with those, with those different ways of looking at it, you bring new blood, new ideas to a game, you're going to make that game go up even more. So I look forward to him coming into boxing because I think with that, we can take boxing and take it up even another level. They go pull some of the UFC fans over? Of course it will, because, like I said, even with these events like this, that pulls some of the UFC fans over already because of the events. So now if you can help this side get better and this side get better, you're going to have an even bigger event at the top when you do decide for an event together. So why would he not? You have your own promotion company. Do you see yourself working with them on some of your events? Of course. Of course. That's why we're doing it now. So my whole goal is to put us together so we can work better.
I mean, it's like everything I do is always to help people come together and work better. You know, it's like people say, well, you got Russian citizenship. Well, yeah, I got Russian citizenship because they offered it, and they're very nice people, and it's like 90% of the population knows Roy Jones Jr. as a fighter. So why would we start at a lower level of trying to make us come together as people and realize that relationships, being together as people, are more important than warm with people? Because if we go to war, we all lose people. We lose loved ones. Why should we war when we don't have to? Why can't we talk and we're humans? We have the best means, the most means of communication, yet we had a hard time communicating. Why? You feel me? That's crazy. So if you got him who's trying to get into boxing, me who's a superior boxer would have already uh, um, promotion company, and I do do MMA and boxing, then why wouldn't we come together and make it better for both of us? It'd be crazy not to. Well, you think boxing's ready for that? For the longest time, it's been boxing versus mixed martial arts. It hasn't been the two communities kind of working together. I know you promoted cards, but do you think the community as a whole, as a boxing community, is ready to start embracing MMA? That's a good question, and let me give you a good answer for that question, okay? When you see two guys come together and make over $100 million, you think it's good for each other? Yes. No, okay, then. <laughs> Easy answer, right? Yep. You'd be a fool if you didn't support UFC and boxing because look what y'all can do together. Huh? Conor McGregor made more money than most fighters that fight have made in one night, and he's not a boxer, he's a UFC guy. Why wouldn't you want to come together with UFC because they can make that happen for you? Why wouldn't you bring the two together? How much of this event is Zuma boxing? Oh, it's probably 50-50. You know, we, we're doing my promotion too, but of course we want to help Zufa Boxing get their feet wet and get into it the right way. So anything we can do to help Zufa Boxing come on, come on board and go quick, we're going to try to do it. So it's 50-50 to me.